we're going to take everything we've learned now and predict the mechanism and then the products of some reactions. And I've included this chart here, which is a chart that you're going to be able to use when working these examples. So what we want to do is analyze all of the pieces to try to find the mechanism that matches. So in this case, we have a primary halide. And the primary halide can do SN2 and E2 reactions. Next, look at the nucleophile. And this is Na plus OCH3 minus. O minus is strong and it's a strong base and nucleophile. So what that means is it's going to favor SN2 and E2 mechanisms. Third, the solvent, which, you know, as I mentioned before, solvent shouldn't be a deciding factor, but it is useful. Uh, the solvent here is THF, it's polar aprotic. which polar A products favor SN2 and E2. And then finally, we're given heat, and the heat is going to favor elimination. E1, E2. So look at everything together and see if you can find something that matches. Well, in this case, what matches is going to be E2, 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 E2. Had the heat not been present, then we would have been all tied up between SN2 and E2. That's when you would use this chart and say primary, strong, SN2 would be favored over E2. But the heat is going to favor the elimination over substitution. So now that we know which mechanism we're dealing with, we can write out what happens. Draw in, here's our alpha carbon, here's a beta carbon, I'm going to draw in a beta hydrogen. Use the base. That will grab that hydrogen and do the elimination. Here's our major product. And usually if you're asked to write a product, you're just going to be asked for the major product, which is this. And then the mechanism that it forms by is E2. In this example, we have a primary chloride. Our uh, reagent here is ethoxide. That is a strong base and nucleophile. So that's going to favor SN2 and E2 reactions. Our primary halide also favors SN2 and E2 reactions. The solvent is a polar aprotic solvent, and that favors SN2 and E2 reactions. So with uh, these mechanisms, we're really tied up between SN2 and E2 from all the factors. But if you look down here at our experimental data, we see that with primary substrates, strong bases and nucleophiles, SN2 will be favored over E2. So that means SN2 is going to be our preferred mechanism for this. For SN2, we'll use our nucleophile, add it to the carbon containing the leaving group, and you lose the leaving group. So now to that carbon, we've added the O ethyl group. So our major organic product is this, and it's formed through an SN2 mechanism. In this example, we have a tertiary bromide. Tertiaries can undergo SN1 and E1 mechanisms, and then also E2, like tertiary halides. So we have three mechanism choices from the organohalide. 
Then if we look at our reagent, we have ethanol, and ethanol is a weak nucleophile and base. That means it can undergo SN1 and E1 reactions. It's not strong enough to do the bimolecular substitution or elimination. And then thirdly, we have heat, and heat favors elimination. So now if you look at all of the factors and figure out what matches, we have in every category E1. So that means this will form a product through the E1 mechanism. For E1, we first lose the leaving group and get a carbocation. In this case, the carbocation is tertiary. It's not going to rearrange. So then find the beta hydrogen that will give the most substituted alkene product. That's going to be this hydrogen. So then when that reacts with the weak base, that will take the hydrogen and eliminate, giving the alkene product. So here is our major organic product, and the mechanism is E1. Here we have a secondary bromide, and this time that is at a chiral center, so we'll pay special attention to that. Secondary halides can undergo any of the four mechanisms, SN1, SN2, E1, and E2. Now we look at a reagent, NaSCH3. We want to break that up and think of Na plus SCH3 minus. Nitrogen and oxygen with a negative charge are bases and nucleophiles. Other atoms, like a sulfur, this is really only a nucleophile. So that means this is going to favor SN2. Finally, the solvent, we have THF, that's polar aprotic, that favors E2 and SN2. So now taking all of these things together, SN2, 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 that's leading us to our mechanism decision. So now for SN2, remember that the nucleophile does the backside attack. So it adds from the back since the bromine is out. So our product will have a hashed bond to the SCH3 group. So that chiral center was inverted. Here's our major organic product, and we got that through an SN2 mechanism.